it was August.13, 1945, four days after the atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. Japan had suffered unimaginable destruction, but Emperor Hirohito refused to surrender. Cap Jerry Yellen, an American fighter pilot, was ordered to fly a combat mission the next day over the Japanese city of Nagoya, where his 16-plane squadron would strike targets from the air. As his military unit was briefed on its assignment, Yellen S. Wingman, a 19-year-old named Phil School Amberg, leaned over and told Yellen he had an inexplicable feeling he was going to die. If we go on this mission, I'm not coming back, Yellen recalls his friend saying. Despite those doubts and no matter how close the end of war seemed School Amberg refused to abandon the mission. He packed his clothes, paid his debts and wrote to his family, Yellen said. The next morning, on August 14, 1945, Yellen told School Amberg to fly alongside the wing of his P-51 Mustang fighter plane. He gave School Amberg a thumbs up. School Amberg returned the gesture. Together they entered the blustery clouds. It wasn't until eight hours later, after Yellen landed back on Iwo Jima and exited his cockpit, that he learned he had just flown the final combat mission of World War II. The news was a bitter relief, Japan had surrendered and the war was over. But the surrender was announced three hours before the planes would descend over Japanese land and begin striking targets. Word that the war was won had not reached the pilots, who had listened for the code word, Utah, to abort their mission. The command never came. The savage fight for Guadalcanal, jungle, crocodiles and snipers during World War II. School Amberg, Yellen said, would be the last man killed in combat in World War II. All Yellen knows is that Schlammerg's plane disappeared into a cloud bank. There was no radio call, no visual fire, no sighting of Japanese planes. Now, at age 93, Yellen recalls those moments of the final combat mission with vivid clarity. The sounds and sights of war never leave you, he says. He is among the few World War II veterans still alive to recount their stories, a sign that a world without them is approaching. As of 2014, only one million veterans witnessed the 70th anniversary of the D-Day landings at Normandy. That's a fraction of the 10.7 million alive for the anniversary in 1984. Yellen was a 17-year-old in Hillside, N.J., working at a steel mill in December 1941. He had graduated high school that year with a scholarship to college but postponed his entrance to the spring so he could save up some money. His plans for the coming years took a sharp detour when news broke that a Japanese fleet of almost 200 aircraft waged a surprise attack on the U.S. Naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, destroying the U.S. Navy battleship USS Arizona within 30 minutes. When I heard about Pearl Harbor, I had made up my mind, he said. I was gonna fly fighter planes against the Japanese. I had made up my mind. Yellen spent his childhood building model airplanes, but never considered flying for the military. He was shaken by the attack on Pearl Harbor, however, and enlisted two months later on his 18th birthday, February 15, 1942.